In this uh, section, we'll talk about transport of respiratory gases. We have seen the exchange at both the levels, that is at lung level as well as at tissue level. Now, how these respiratory gases actually get transported through blood. This is what we want to discuss here. In the first segment, we'll talk about transport of oxygen. Oxygen, when diffuses in, it is taken in two forms. One is as dissolved in plasma. So oxygen as dissolved oxygen in plasma. This percentage is very less. Hardly 1 to 3 percent of the total oxygen which is to be transported goes in this form because it is very less oxygen which dissolves in this plasma. So only 1 to 3 percent. The major part of oxygen is transported as so oxygen transported as a complex with hemoglobin as oxyhemoglobin. Now before we actually take up how and exactly which process helps we need to understand few things about hemoglobin and as we said this is the major part it is 97 to 99 percent of oxygen is transported in this manner. Hemoglobin is made up of two parts. It has a protein that is globin and it has iron containing part which is known as porphyrin ring. Porphyrin ring or porphyrin head or it is also known as the prosthetic group of the globin protein. Each porphyrin part or this porphyrin is made up of four pyrrole rings and each ring has one ferrous that means this the iron part which is there in this hemoglobin molecule is in the form of form of ferrous and each ferrous binds to one molecule of oxygen. So if the ring has four of these ferrous ions then it is capable of binding to one oxygen molecule here second oxygen here, third here and fourth here. So one hemoglobin molecule binds to four oxygen molecules. One hemoglobin, important point, binds or can carry four oxygen molecules. Let us write it as bind can, four, one hemoglobin binds to four oxygen molecules. This is the molecule number wise, one molecule to four molecules. If we talk about grams, one gram of hemoglobin can transport 1.34 milliliters of oxygen. So here there are two numbers, one is molecule based one hemoglobin molecule can bind to four molecules of oxygen. The reason is in this hemoglobin molecule, the porphyrin part, the iron containing part has four pyrrole rings and each ring has one ferrous. Each ferrous binds to one oxygen molecule and that is why one hemoglobin will be able to transport four oxygen molecules. And if we go by the gram, one gram would go, one gram of hemoglobin would transport 1.34 milliliters of oxygen. 
Now in a normal individual, we know the hemoglobin account. How much is the hemoglobin that is present? And there's a range. In females, it is less as compared to males. But if we come to a figure, say 100 milliliters of blood has 15 grams of hemoglobin. Then how much oxygen will be transported by this 100 milliliters of blood? 1 gram carries 1.34. So 15 grams would carry how much? This is going to give us the actual volume of oxygen transported by 100 milliliters of blood. What we have to keep in mind is whether we are talking about males or females. In females, normally the hemoglobin count is about 12 to 13 grams per 100 milliliters. In males, it comes to around 14 to 15 grams. Here we have taken 15. So whatever the number is, if it, somebody's hemoglobin count is less and if the question says that a person's hemoglobin is 12 grams and whenever we're talking of hemoglobin, then we are taking it in 100 milliliters of blood. So if it is 12, then how much oxygen will be transported by this 100 milliliters of blood? We have to take that 12, multiply it with what is transported by 1 gram and the value that we get is going to be our answer. So hemoglobin related things, two important numbers. One hemoglobin molecule is going to transport four oxygen molecules. Four oxygen molecules. And one gram of hemoglobin is capable of transporting 1.5. 3-4 milliliters of oxygen. So major part of oxygen is transported as oxyhemoglobin and the simple reaction that we write is oxygen with hemoglobin gives us oxyhemoglobin. This oxyhemoglobin is a temporary short-lived complex. Temporary and short-lived complex. The factor which is helping in formation of this complex is high PO2 in alveolar air. That means when we inhale the air which comes into our alveoli has higher PO2. So that higher partial pressure facilitates formation of this oxyhemoglobin complex. Plus, there is, or one more reason is, there is low TCO2 in the blood. That also facilitates the formation of oxyhemoglobin complex. Sorry, low PCO2, sorry, high PCO2. In the blood. So the blood which is coming up to the lungs is having high PO2 in the alveolar air and high PCO2 in the blood which is coming to the lungs. Both these conditions favor transport of oxygen in the form of oxyhemoglobin. So maximum part of oxygen gets transported as oxyhemoglobin that is with hemoglobin and very less is dissolved in plasma. This is seen in case of higher animals who have high metabolic rate. The lower animals who have less metabolic rate maximum is transported in plasma because then it is going to take time and then diffusion so it is going to be a slow process. But they are able to uh, deal with that situation because their metabolic rate is very low. In higher animals like human beings, the rate is higher, metabolic rate, and that is why oxygen demand is also more. So hemoglobin helps in transport. And that is why hemoglobin is the respiratory pigment. So out of two respiratory gases, that is oxygen and carbon dioxide, this is how oxygen gets transported. Very less as dissolved and maximum as oxyhemoglobin. One hemoglobin molecule is uh, going to take four oxygen molecules and one gram of hemoglobin
hemoglobin is going to take 1.34 milliliters of oxygen. Now, in the next part, we'll take up transport of carbon dioxide.